Yeah. Um, make sure that's happening. Yep, it says recording. Good. All right. Glad you can see that. Now I've lost Boone. No, we are Boone. Right. <laughs> Over to Boone. Make host. Uh, Boone, like, you can good like focus Boone on finding everybody. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say that. Um, Boone, if you want to um, focus on muting, um, if we can just ask everyone one more time, if you can just mute your microphone, um, just so, the, so we can reduce the noise in the background. So, Mandy, do I do I spotlight you now? Yes, please. The big, the big one. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Thank you. Just okay. a quick, quick question. Have you got just a quick minute? Um, my daughter-in-law would possibly like to join if there's enough room. Is there room for one more person? I think we can probably say yes because we actually um, have 100 people register. Um, but it's such a beautiful like, day out there. I think some people have um, decided to do that. So I do have a few people who are going to be sent a link in five minutes <laughs> if there's Thank enough you. room. So, okay. so, yeah, but you can wait a couple of minutes just so we make sure that everybody who did register can get on. Um, and then I absolutely share. Thank you so much. Okay. All right, so welcome to our Taste of Greece. Um, I have written a few notes because there's so much to share that I need to make sure I remember to tell you all. Um, so first of all, I want to thank um, our team uh, for uh, Boone is, is um, obviously manning the chat box for everybody. So you know where that is down the middle and the bottom. You can certainly ask questions there. Better to do it that way. We have a lot of people on now. We've got 50 people on. So better to post a little question in the chat box and Boone will help you or one of us will come off mute and help as well. So um, feel free to ask questions. Um, and um, we've, we've, we've talked about which model firm mix people have and this seems to be a real mixture. And those of you who don't own one, just a warning, you might need one by the end of this class. You might be well and truly tempted. Um, so... We love doing these classes and um, the team are just fantastic at supporting me. And um, what we are all passionate about three things, helping you guys get the most out of your Thermomix, sharing our knowledge, and of course, the Thermomix itself. And we already had someone there, I think it was Joy, say she didn't cook before she had a Thermomix. Um, and um, and it, it's, yeah, so it enables us to cook dishes that we would never have cooked without it. Um, whilst make, make, we can cook them easily while saving time and money and choosing healthy options. Um, you'll probably notice today we also have a lot of fun doing this, which is why we keep doing them. And obviously, you know, for the other reasons that I've already said. Um, and if any of you are interested in having fun and learning more, a great way to learn about your Thermomix is actually to become part of the team. Anybody wanting to earn themselves a TM6, which is the latest model, which I will give you a quick little run through in a minute, uh, is um, if they start in September, can earn themselves uh, a TM6 with four sales in their first 60 days. Now, so, so whilst we're going through this, have a think about people that you know who might be interested in purchasing or upgrading their Thermomix. And if, if you only find two people, you'll still save $500 off the cost of your TM6. If you find three people, you'll save $1,000 off the cost of your TM6. So it's a really cool um, option. Someone needs to mute, please. We've got the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. There is a little mute button there. Thank you. All right, um, so why Greek food? Greek food because we have an expert in our team and that's Irene. She is of Greek descent and if many of you will be familiar with her now and from our French class where she did the most amazing pastries uh, and um, she's, she's a massive asset. Everybody in this team is an asset, everybody's got things to share. But we are now a very multicultural team because we have Greece, we have Singapore with Boone, we have um, Keisha and um, Marla, who are Polish. And we have Alicia, who is of Polish descent, but um, grew up in Spain. So we'll call her Spanish, because that's what she <laughs> thinks of herself. Uh, and obviously, there's some Aussies in the team as well. So we are very multicultural, which is fantastic. All right. So, um, Boone, can you find my, um, my other screen, please? Yep. Certainly will in a minute. We've got too many screens on now. I lost your I know, I know. I lost your TM screen. What happened That's to your right. TM screen? Hang on. Yep, so yep. what we are going to make today, we are going to take you to Greece. 
We, um, uh, Irene, with her amazing pastry skills and desserts, is going to, I'm not even going to, am I going to try? Um, Galacto Burrico. Was any, anything close to that, but anyway, <laughs> she'll tell you how it's properly pronounced. Um, uh, we're making, well, um, Pam is going to make a prawn saganaki. I'm making a Cypriot grain salad. I have actually been pre-cooking the lamb in this, this thermomix. I'll go through that a little bit later on. Um, pita bread and um, tzatziki. So just a quick rundown for those of you who don't have a TM6. Um, it, you have three screens, so it's very similar to a TM5 screen-wise, except this screen is pretty much the size of a mini iPad. Um, we have the three dials on here. Um, whichever one of these is large is what it, you, you use this, this silver button for to turn up. So I can turn up my time there. I can turn up my temperature here. It's hot because I've actually been steaming the lamb for two and a half hours. Um, and that's my speed. So it's also got a lot more functions. If I swipe my screen, it's just like using a, an, an iPhone. Um, I've got scales in here. Scales are fabulous. I use these outside of cooking all the time. Um, they are one gram increments on the TM6. Um, we have a domo, which is a kneading function. We have turbo, which um, I will actually show you yeah, a little bit later on. Um, it's just a super fast speed. We've got a pre-clean in here, and those of you who have a TM5 with a cook key will have that function on your TM5 if you've updated. We've got a kettle, so if you've got different, um, well, we don't have a fancy kettle, but I know a lot of people have fancy kettles, and they will already have this feature on their kettle. But basically, um, if you want to have your teas at different temperatures, so herbal teas are meant to be at different temperatures, I just use a boiling kettle, but if you want to, you have this feature here that you can use. We've got an automatic blend function. We've got a slow cook function, which um, is enhanced by having a blade cover, which I'll just go back in. Um, so a blade cover is one of these. It is available from our mix shop, and it is, uh, they say it is for the TM5 and the TM6. Um, it just sits over the blades of your thermomix, like that which gives you more volume if you're slow cooking. So you can slow cook in your TM5 as well, um, but this gives you more volume and means that your meat's not gonna get um, you know, chopped up as it gets soft. Same with the sous vide. So you, again, you use the blade cover with the sous vide. Uh, and um, what, what sous vide is, it literally means um, in a vacuum or without, um, I forgot what it literally means, but anyway, <laughs> um, under a vacuum, that's what it is. And, and basically you have it, um, your food in a bag and you, you slow cook it in here. So a steak might be cooked at 50 degrees um, for maybe you know, 50 minutes or something like that. So it's just a different, it can have very tender um, meats and you can actually do fish. And um, I think Lee has done bananas. And I've done, uh, um, oh no, that was, a, that was a slow cook, I think. I, oh no, I think Lee's done bananas. I've done a slow cook, um, amazing pineapple, delicious. Fermentation mode for um, yogurt, rice cooker mode. And this is the exciting bit about this screen. We've got the thicken um, function on there, which is for sauces and um, also um, uh, custards and things like that. But the thing is, we've got an empty screen here. So that's gradually gonna be filled. Okay, I'll go back to my home screen. The other feature we have on this, if I swipe this way, we can go straight into cookie do. And I know some of you TM31 owners probably think we don't need cookie do. Cookie do is amazing, whether you, um, whatever Thermomix you, you own, because um, well, on the TM6, you can go straight into cookie do on here. On the five, you need to um, access it through your iPad or your computer or your phone. We have an app on the phone. Um, and um, the TM31 knows you can't, but all your cooking is manual anyway, but you can absolutely access all the recipes. It's just a massive library from all around the world. So you can search through here. Um, I will, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll look up. So this is what I have been making today. So I've, start, I've made already, um, well, my lamb bit. Um, I've got to spell it properly. Uh -oh. I think it's K L. Here we are. Here we go. It's 
thrown into it, lamb paprika. So that, that's what I, that's how I cook the lamb today, and I'll talk you through a little bit more of that a bit later. But um, we are going to move to Irene because she um, is going to show us this amazing pastry dish, which I'll let her pronounce properly. <laughs> hey, everyone. It's Hala for Buriko. All together now. No, it's okay. Um, all right. We're going to jump straight to the other screen, Ben. You want to swap me over to... Um, sure. I've got uh, my two Thermomixes up today just to speed up the process. So I'll wait for Boone to... Move this over. Fantastic. So I've got my TM5 and I've got my TM6. I'm going to start my sauce in the TM5. Um, so pretty much I've gone through all the recipes on Cookie Do. There is no Valapobutical recipe. So you need to basically make it up um, of a combination of recipes. The I first tells people what it is. What What is? What, what the dessert is. Just, just, yeah, yeah. Uh, just so it's a semolina over. cup. Yeah, yeah. So the recipes we're using. So this is really important. If you've got pen and paper, you need to make a combination of recipes. The first one is the ghee. So this is basically clarified butter. So there's a recipe for ghee. It takes takes two hours. Um, essentially what it does is it uh, cooks down the, the butter um, I'm going to show you this a little bit gross, but you'll see there's milk on the bottom of that saucepan, and I've done this deliberately. So you can see that the butter's solidified, but all the milk starts to gather at the base. So that's purely melted butter. When you're making ghee, you're actually cooking out all of that milk solid, and it ends up being almost like black specks at the bottom of the bowl once you've cooked it for a couple of hours. Now, if you don't do that, if you, don't, if you use straight melted butter, and you don't use the ghee, so that's really lovely and clarified. Um, you'll end up with black specks through your pastry um, because it actually obviously starts to cook in the oven instead. And instead of clarifying and splitting out those milk solids into those black specks, it's black specks that you strain out, it'll end up in your galactobutico and it actually looks doesn't look very pretty. So you don't want to do that. So make sure you eat clarified butter. You can buy it, but it's certainly much easier to make it yourself two hours in the food mix. Um, at 120 degrees, I think, for memory, and then just strain it through a nut milk bag or a muslin cloth. Okay, so let's get started with our sauce. So if you look at, look for a syrup recipe on the Thermomix, there's recipes within, say, cocktail recipes for sugar syrup. So sugar syrup is usually equal parts sugar and water. With this syrup, we're using two parts sugar, and two and three parts water. So I, I have essentially weighed out 300 grams of, I'm using caster sugar, you can use raw sugar, coconut sugar, whatever you like. Um, I'm adding to that 450 grams of water. I had to remember for a second whether my scales were. Pretty good. Okay, to that I am adding some flavorings. So specifically, I've got a cinnamon stick. I'm using a piece of the lemon peel and orange peel, and you can see there's no white on that. I'm just literally using the skin. Look at yourself, a really good grater and lemon peel. To that, I'm also adding. Uh, some lemon juice. So the lemon juice is really important and it's basically juice of half a lemon and that's going to help stop the sugar from crystallising. Uh, look, our weather's a little bit mixed here in Melbourne, cold one day, really hot the next um, and this isn't a dessert that I would necessarily leave out of the fridge and in order to stop it from crystallising in the fridge you want to use um, some lemon juice. Now, anyone who's found George Colomaris's recipe on, uh, sorry, on uh, YouTube, he uses saffron syrup, or sorry, saffron. He doesn't use lemon juice. He uses saffron to flavour his syrup. Um, so if you want to use different flavours, whether it's orange blossom, you want to use rose water, you want to use the saffron threads that George used, then you need to use, and you're not using a lemon juice, you need to use some glucose syrup. 
I don't care what brand it is, it just basically it acts like an invert sugar. And we're talking maybe a teaspoon. What that does is, it's, again, it's, it's a way of stopping it from crystallising. And that way when it's sitting in the fridge, you can, really, you can still serve the dessert and you won't have sugar crystals. Now, some people use honey um, when they're making their sugar syrup. We don't use honey in our recipe at home. Um, you certainly can. Some of the recipes on Thermomix, like if you look at the golden baklava, um, talks about um, you know, putting it in and boiling it for 10 minutes. I wouldn't do that. You actually lose a lot of the flavor of the honey by boiling it. So instead use, um, let it cook for the time it needs to do the sugar syrup, and then add in a tablespoon of honey at the end, maybe cook it for two minutes um, and then take it off. So to do this, we're ready to go. So 300 sugar, 450 water, lemon zest, orange zest is completely optional, a cinnamon stick, you want about juice of half a lemon and you want just a little bit of um, the glucose syrup, a teaspoon. So we're going to set the time for 15 minutes of aroma and speed one is ample. Okay. So we've talked about the ghee recipe, we've talked about the sugar syrup, and we're going to move over to the TM6, and we're going to do the semolina custard. So this is a recipe, the ghee recipe is in Pukidu, as is the semolina custard. So I've added it to my wheat, and semolina custard. And So I'm making one and a half times this recipe. So it asks for 60 grams of sugar, and you can follow that. It's just I'm doing a larger quantity. Mum likes to eat it, so may as well make some more while we're at it. So I'm doing 90 grams of sugar. Now it asks me to mill it down. I'm using caster sugar today, so I don't need to do that. So I'm going to bypass this step. But if you're using raw sugar, then definitely mill it down into an icing sugar. And you scrape down the sides of the bowl and then you're adding in your eggs. Okay, so this is where it's completely optional. I'm using three whole eggs and one egg yolk. If you use just egg yolks, you're going to end up with a stiffer, firmer custard. I'm using the egg whites. Mum likes it fluffier. So you can just use three whole eggs. Um, and I've simply added, I'm still just doing three whole eggs. Um, and you can do that even if you're doing a single recipe. It just increases the quantity. It doesn't affect the flavour too much. And I'm just adding one egg yolk um, just to give it a bit more, um, I guess, of a, a buttery base. So my eggs go in. Irene, can I just interrupt a minute? Maybe yeah. you mention your quantity as you go. There are people cooking along with you. Oh, well, they can just follow the recipe from the screen. So if they want to follow my recipe, I'm doing 90 grams of sugar. But if they've already pre-weighed everything for, to follow the semolina custard, just follow the recipe that's on screen. So on here, it talks about um, 60 grams of sugar, three egg yolks. I've just used three whole eggs. Um, it just it becomes a lighter consistency. So that's really optional. Um, from here, we click on next. Put our measuring cup on, and we're going to mix that for two minutes on speed five. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, we still can hear you. Yep. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you. Okay, so um, while it's doing that, I'm just going to sneak this in front. Okay, so this is Antonio Filo Pastry, available from your Coles, slash Woolies, slash um, IGA. There's two types. This is a fine, thin version, and then there's a slightly thicker one. The thicker one's really good for dishes um, like a Um You want to use a fine one when you're making this dessert. I prefer the texture, it's much lighter. Much flakier, much nicer for, for this. Now, the other thing that's really important is that um, you pull that out as early as possible. So I've had this out of the fridge for a couple of hours. 
the reason for that is to ensure that the dough, that, so the pastry softens enough. Um, if you take it straight out of the fridge and try to start using it, you're going to get cracks in your dough. It's not the end of the world, but it's good to pull it out early. Show you some of my other things. Now, this looks like a paintbrush. It almost is. It's actually a pastry brush. But I strongly recommend you get, um, sorry, I couldn't hear where the pastry was from, um, any of the supermarkets. Okay, sorry, back to this. Um, the pastry brush. Um, I bought this from Essential Ingredient. It's actually pretty wide, so I guess if you compare it to the size of your spatula, it's even wider. So it's pretty big. Um, it's going to make your job so much easier. Um, the thing with the pastry brush, the longer it's going to take you to brush your sheets. So next, straight down the sides. Let me do that. Okay, so that's for 100. I'm using 150 grams of my semolina. Full cream milk. And that's for 700. I'm using Um, double this recipe, there's probably not enough room in the bowl to expand all of these ingredients. Okay, lid back on. 10 minutes, 90 degrees. I'm still going to cook it for the 10 minutes. I'm going to have a look at the consistency and then we can come back to it if it needs a little bit longer. And that goes to speed three. Okay, Boone, can you move to the other camera for me? Thanks. Yes. We don't need to use that camera going forward. Let's get ourselves organized over here. Okay, so really, really important. Have your butter ready to go. Um, I'm gonna make two versions today. I'm using a, a muffin mold um, type tin. A tin would be better than silicone, but that's all I've got, so that's what I'm gonna use. I've also got a tray, only a small one, um, which I've lined with some paper and I've greased the inside to keep the paper intact. And I'll show you how to do that. So as, I'm, as I said earlier, make sure your pastries are being at room temperature for at least an hour. Now I'm slicing my pastry to do the moulds for the, um, for the muffin molds. So do it on a chopping board. Um, I've got a large board obviously here. Don't do it on your thermo mat. Um, you can't cut on your thermo mat. As soon as it's um, a fiberglass, made out of fiberglass, so you'll end up um, with contamination. So don't do that. Okay, gosh, I need to unfold this. You see how nice and soft it is? Cut from my finger going through it. Um, there's no cracks in it, which is great. So, a couple of tips in terms of keeping this moist. If you're really, really slow at this, that's okay. Get yourself a tea towel and make sure it's just a little bit moist. Just enough so that when it sits over the top, it's going to keep those sheets from drying out. We're going to motor, so I don't really need it um, right now, but a nice clean tea towel will do the trick. Okay, let's go. So, I'm going to start with doing the... Um, these ones. So I'm going to roll this, I'll just move this over a little bit. My first shake down. And you'll understand now why the big pastry brush is really, really handy. And there's not a lot of butter on this, guys. 
and you still have quickly that moves around. So get yourself a nice thing. I, I, I saw one guy using a paintbrush on YouTube, so I guess that works. As long as it's a brand new one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and food safe. So that's one sheet, that's two sheets. We're going to go three sheets. And it's a slack, really sloppy paint job. That's fine. Okay. So I'm going to cut this one down the middle and I'm going to cut it into three. So sheets and pop them in. I'm going to space this. I'm going to do three. I'm going to leave the rest of the mixture for the tin over there. If I've got more mixture then I'll, I'll make another one. Now the mixture using the 700 grams will do 12 muffin shapes. And these individual shapes are actually quite nice to serve which you'll see at the end. Now, depending on whether or not you like lots of pastry, like my mum does, she quite likes these individual ones because she gets nice pastry all the way through, through that. So they're ready to go. And I obviously need the other three to do the tops. And we'll do those shortly. So this is where the towel comes in handy. Nice and moist, just to stop those from drying out. Let's go back to... Now doing our tin. Okay, so you can continue to do them on, on the board, but I find it's easier to lay. So hopefully you guys can see this. So I take a sheet. Now my preference is to have it coming up a little bit on the one side, down, and then the leftover will fold over. But really, you can also do it through the middle. So just find whatever works for you. So I'm just going to do through the middle. And in fact, the, the easiest option would be to actually slice the pastry the size of the base of the tin. And that way you'll get almost like a vanilla slice cut, so you won't get any pastry on the side. But like I said, mum loves her pastry, so we're going to do it this way. So I've got it in. I'm brushing the base, sides. Okay. And you've got to work quickly, guys, otherwise your pastry will start to dry out and make things quite difficult for you. Don't worry about it tearing. It's all those crunchy bits you'll get to have later. And don't worry about a little bit of air pockets down the base. It helps to separate it. What is really critical is that you brush in between each layer. Okay, I'm going to go lengthwise now. To do this, I'm going to brush my sheet first. Fold it in so that way I've got butter in between. We have about three minutes to go. Asha. Ah. Uh, tengo el video apagado y el micrófono apagado. Oh, 
Um, Ern, do you want to find who that is and mute them? Yep. Okay. So that's enough, I think, towards the bottom. I want a few more sheets, one more sheet to go through this way. And again, don't worry if it's not perfect. Any questions? Silence. Very Too engrossed. Too engrossed in watching your wonderful skills of doing <laughs> it all. Yes. Okay. Irene. Yes. How many sheets roughly did you line the, the tin with? I, I lost I count. Actually, I actually I didn't count them either. Um. So if you look at George's recipe, it says about eight. But I reckon I've got Eight. probably the equivalent of about 10 underneath. So I did two, four. So if you think because it's folded, six, eight, nine, 10, 11. So there's roughly 10 sheets at the bottom because of the way I folded them. Yeah? Thank you very much. So we're going to leave a sheet at the top to fold to make it all nice and neat. Um, but you can see that worked really, really quickly. It's really important you do that. Now, syrup is ready. Um, and the trick is the pastry brush, guys. Get yourself a really thick one or a nice paintbrush that's got some food safe fibers on it. Um, it's going to make your job so much quicker and easier. Okay, we've got about 20 seconds to go on our creme pack. Okay, so in the recipe, um, the next step is for me to add some butter and it doesn't ask for this, but I'm actually adding the zest of orange and lemon. Now mum's recipe only has lemon, um, lemon zest in it and lemon juice and um, she doesn't use orange. I'm just doing different flavours. Whoops. <laughs> doesn't matter. So it's in the pastry. George puts his, he grates his in here. So, you know, you can do that as well. Beautiful. Let's have a look at our custard. I'll pull it over. Don't need to change screen spoon. I'm just going to do the rest. Okay. Beautiful. Looks amazing. Okay. So I'm just um, going to show everyone how gorgeous that is. Okay. The next step asks you to add some vanilla. There's a few things I love from Costco. One of them is the massive queen. You can make your own vanilla bean paste. It's a lot of vodka. So this does the trick for us. So I'm putting roughly one and a half teaspoons. It also asks for some unsalted butter. So I'm just going to add one of this. This is the stuff that I had on that stove top. So it's roughly, I'd say probably out of tablespoons, so it's quite thin. I'm adding in my zest here. I don't do it from the beginning because you kind of lose those oils. I don't know, I just find the flavours nicer, moving it the other way around. So I ask you to insert the measuring cup and stir for 10 seconds. I'm just going to do that by hand. We'll do it back on the only so I don't have to change the camera screen. I mean, just in case if people do watch uh, George on YouTube of this, his uh, custard is a lot more runny. Does it matter? Yeah, it's like water. Yeah, um, it'll still yeah. set. It will absolutely set. It's got the ingredients in there to set. Um, and a lot of consultants have made it. His recipe is, um, he basically uses the syrup as a dressing over the top. Whereas we're doing this, this is the traditional method. So we're going to make it swim, swim in custard. 
So guys, that's um, quite a full bowl. In we go. Can I just say, I had a little bit on my finger. It tastes amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Looks amazing. It tastes so good. Now, you don't have to rush here. The five kilometre thing. <laughs> well, you probably have to walk five k's to, you know, wear off, you know, walk off a slice. But... It's all right. Mandy, after this, I'll meet Irene midpoint and I'll bring you some. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do the... the your five, you come in five k's, I'll go out five k's and we come to right. ten k's, yeah? <laughs> you have it? Actually, I think the two k's might be my place. I might be the middle point. Oh, Actually, perfect. it is them. <laughs> perfect. Okay. So, there is enough here. Let's scoop this one over. And to be honest, we actually bake this blind without pastry. Um, so exactly the same mixture. Oh, yes, I burnt, me. burnt my hand. So it's roughly two heat tablespoons in these. And honestly, don't leave out the zest. Really makes all the difference. Ooh. Like Superwoman working really, really, really fast. Okay, let's finish these ones off. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to finish these ones off first. Let's just move everything over slightly. Oops. Okay, so just tap it down a little bit just to get your mixture to the base. Now you've got a couple of options with these. You can scrunch this down a little bit, put a little bit of on here, and you can kind of do the same thing with this one. You can scrunch it up, and it almost comes out a bit like a rosette. They look a bit funny when they're baking, but they present really, really well. So that's one option. The next one is to do to tuck it in. So same as what I did before. And do cover these guys. You can see straight away my pastry is drying out. So really important to, I probably should have covered all both of these. To do this way, just cut a little bit off. Let's make them a bit smaller. And then use a spoon or a knife just to kind of tuck them in inside. Again, don't be too fussed about them being perfect. And you don't want them to be super tight. You want to give that um, custard a chance to expand. But it's about not getting flyaways with your pastry. Then we'll do the last one. I'm just going to cut a little bit off the sides of that. If you think I'm using a lot of butter, um, I suggest you get online and see what, how much butter some of the other chefs in Greece use. Can you repeat that, Irene? That was a bit quiet. Oh, I said um, this isn't a lot of butter that I'm brushing on. Um, if anything, I'm being a little bit, I'm holding back a bit. Um, they use so much more um, in some of the overseas videos you'll watch on YouTube. So these are ready to go in the oven. Speaking of oven, I'm now going to turn it on. My oven is very quick to turn on, but if it takes a while, you want it to go to 180 degrees. Mine only takes five minutes to hit temp. So I'll turn that on now. Okay, let's finish this one off. Okay, so the same rule applies when you're doing the butter, you know, pulling your ingredients back in. So you can see how quickly that's dried out. Don't stress about it. We've covered the one that matters, which is here. And we're going to use the butter to soften it down. Okay, let's go. 
in. And I'm not packing it down. Be really light with it. We need to press on it. Okay, next one. This one broke off, doesn't matter. Don't stress about it. One more sheet. And this is to neaten it off. So I'm going to do this your way. I'm going to do this this way. Actually, no, I think fold it exactly like I did before. And I'm not going to cut it off. I'm actually going to try and tuck these ends in. It'll help to keep that pastry down. Okay, so same as I did before. I'm just going to push this back slightly. You don't want to pierce it. Now you can cut it a bit off if it's just a little bit too long. And then just tuck it in. Okay. And this other end. Beautiful. I'm just pressing gently just to get that back into place. So we're good to go. Okay. More butter because we haven't put enough in yet. Okay, so in terms of slicing it, I'm going to go, I'm not cutting all the way through. I'm literally just scoring the top. I'm not cutting through to the cream. Um, that size will make a nice portion, like that sort of width. And I'm going back, I'm just doing little squares. Why can't you cut it after it's baked, Irene? I know, so this is to allow the... Um, a little bit of the, the um, liquid to escape with a little bit of steam. Oh, okay. To escape and helps dry up the custard and set. You don't have to do this. You could literally just do a couple of stabs at the top. If you want to keep it whole, no problem, yeah? Um, but I guess, again, I'm just showing you the way my mum's my mum's taught me. So we're good to go. So that's ready to go in the oven. The other one's ready to go. And in terms of cooking time, so 45 minutes to an hour um, and just keep an eye on it. Now, my, this one I'd say will probably take around that 50 minutes. It just depends. So just check your oven. You want golden brown. You don't want it too dark. Fantastic. Over to you, Mandy. That's amazing. Thank you. So um, if you want to go to my, no, the other screen, sorry. Boom. Okay. All right, okay. So, um, okay, so lamb. I'm just gonna show you my lamb. So this has been steamed. It is that recipe I mentioned before. It's been steamed in the Varoma for two and a half hours. Uh, you can see it looks amazing. I'm just letting it cover up and rest. But basically, um, whenever you're using the Varoma, you know you need to have a minimum of 500 grams of water in there. Um, you cook things Varoma temperature speed one, and the time is whatever, um, the dependence on whatever you're cooking. So um, the lamb was two and a half hours, which actually meant that I had to, 
um, top up the water part way through. So after an hour, I had to add, I had started off 1,500 grams of water. Then um, after an hour, I added 500. And then after another hour, I added 500, but that was only for 30 minutes. But that, that is the, um, the, the lamb recipe, and that was the, um, the lamb plectico, if that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. I'm not the Greek in the, club, in the group. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's plectico. I'm sorry. Which, which means stolen. I don't know. Oh, does it? Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't steal it, I promise you. It's probably right. been, you know, lamb stolen from your neighbour to cook for Easter. Yeah. It's usually right. what they do. So I am going to now make uh, the tzatziki. Sorry, the screen's... Okay, whilst my screen's firing up, fingers at the ready. We have a quiz. All right? Okay, so you need to type the answer into your chat box. What <laughs> is the name? Um, the, the, I will just... There'll be a random prize this time. I, I, took, I took ages sending out prizes to everybody last time, so there's going to be a random one this time. But Boone can still see who sort of got the first um, answer. Yep. What is the name of a Greek dip made with grey mullet roe, also known as Greek caviar. Terry got it first, is it? Summer. <laughs> what is it? What's the answer? Yeah, it's a Absolutely. Cool. <laughs> All right, don't worry. There's, there's some other little foodie ones coming up as well. All right, so I'm going to find the tzatziki recipe. Now, that lamb one, I'll just quickly show you. That lamb recipe is in my week here. I'm not going to pronounce it, okay? But it basically, it, um, it takes you through um, the pita bread, I'm uh, sorry, the, the tzatziki, it takes you through the pita bread, and it takes you through the lamb, all right? However, I've had a little bit of a play in the week, and um, I've gone with these pita bread, because the pita bread in that recipe are gluten-free, which is great for people like me who like to eat gluten-free. However, um, when I tested them out on the boys in the house, they're going, nah, Nah, not as good. So I then had to try the other ones. And these are actually quite amazing. I was very impressed with myself. Our, our branch manager says, you've got to remember those wow moments. And it was a wow moment when they came out. So I am doing the individual tzatziki dip here. And I'm just going to start cooking. So I have actually done this bit. Well, I've got, I've got some more here. So, so two Lebanese cucumbers. All right. There's only one there because I've done one already just to make things a little bit faster and a little bit of salt. I'm just gonna put a big pinch of salt in there. All right, pop my lid on. Three seconds, that's all set for me. All I've gotta do is turn to speed five. Simple. Now what it wants me to do is put it into a simmering basket. I love this. I use it all the time to drain things. Just show you. So there we go. We're chopped up there. All right. I'm going to put this. I have to do it over my. Actually, I'll grab a bowl out quickly. Um, I'm going to put it. I usually just sit it in the bottom of or the edge of my seat. So I'll put it over there for the moment. And I'm just going to put my. It just to get you know all the juices out, otherwise your tzatziki is going to be really um, wet. Now the key to cleaning out your bowl too is when you, if you've got bits left on the side, it's counterintuitive, but um, what you need to do is push everything to the bottom and then go in a clockwise direction to help um, break out your bowl. Some of these things you get little bits caught underneath the blades, but basically that is the easiest way to um, get the most out of your bowl. So that's just going to sit there, draining. There's liquid, liquid come out. Oops, hang on. Oh, I can't get there. Liquid's come out already. That's going to sit there and drain for 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, and then I've got to squeeze the excess out, juice out. Clean and dry mixing bowl. Okay, one garlic clove. Got one garlic clove here, going in. And then you can either use dill or mint. So I've actually got dill. And I'm going to put my lid on. 
And again, it's told me three seconds, just turn to speed seven. Break down the size of my bowl. So easy, just follow the instructions. There we go, so far, beautifully done. I love um, the garlic cloves in here. I mean, who would use a garlic press? They're, press, they're terrible, they're clean. 350 grams of um, yogurt. Now, I'm just going to put a few people. I've got two, two sets here. I'm just trying to think, oh, no, that's for that one. Just make sure I put the right one in. This I have, um, and I didn't make it. It's one of the things I don't make. I think everybody has their things that they, they make and um, things that they don't. Um, we don't eat enough of it in the house to actually for me to make it. I do sometimes make the coconut one, that's really good. Great if you're dairy free. Anyway, that's close enough. 20 grams of lemon juice. Just in here. I have an empty dishwasher, so I can fill it up in a minute. 30 grams of olive oil. Pepper. Pepper and the reserve cucumber. So as I said, I did do a little bit before, so I have got this in here um, so we can keep going. The lid back on again. Um, 15 seconds, turned itself onto reverse automatically, speed three. Okay, I've got another question for you. Are you ready? What is the name of the Greek aniseed liqueur? Yes. <laughs> it's too fast. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Now, um, I'm going to put this into this bowl here. And interesting story, this bowl actually comes from Greece. When I was backpacking around Greece, I loved these bowls so much. I bought four and I got them back. I was in the UK. I got them back to the UK and they come with me to Australia. And they are probably, oh dear, I don't even know what to think, probably 35 years old. I've got four of them. Just giving away my age well and truly. Um, anyway, there's a tzatziki. And I will actually, when that other cucumber has um, drained, I will just press any extra juice out of it and um, I will uh, add that in as well. Now, little tip, most of you probably know this, but for those who don't, okay, you can see there's still dip around there. I'd like to get all that out so I don't waste anything. Sue Kalman, Julie Rao, Julie Rodsky, they all know what to do. What we do is we swipe the screen, we hit the turbo button. Go on this and literally just turn. Now the really important thing when you use turbo, so um, turbo is, um, uh, it, it is just super fast. It is, it, it's available on your TM, you've got it on your TM31. Got it on your TM5 down the bottom of the screen. That's what looks like a little book. You press on there, and Turbo is one of the options. All right, but really, really important is when you use Turbo, you've got to get out of that Turbo. So just hit your home button on your TM5 down here or on here. Otherwise, it will not release the lid. It won't release the lid until you have got out of Turbo. But you can see now my blades are clean. All right, and I've just got to do exactly what I said to you before. Just push down the sides here. and just scrape it all out. Always, as much as possible, go in a clockwise direction because then your um, spatula will be hitting the blunt, well, the, the, the rounded side of the blades, not the sharp side. There we go, all right. So that's a tzatziki there, and I will put that, oops, hang on. 
Yeah. Um, and I'm just quickly, someone was asking about Giddy before. It does solidify. I'm so bad at getting the camera on this thing. It does solidify. If you haven't made it, um, it is the most amazing thing. And I'll tell you what, it smells like caramel and it tastes like caramel. It's incredible. Really, really good um, oil to have in your house. Um, it has a high smoke point too, so it's really good for cooking. Okay. Now I am going to find um, the grains. So where are we? My week. We're doing the Cypriot grain salad in this one. All right, start cooking. So here we go. Um, so it, I know the first two things. I've got one teaspoon of ground cumin and one teaspoon of honey. So those are in there, whoops, in there together. It's probably a little bit extra honey because you always manage to leave a bit of that behind, I think. Just going to do an Irene and just use my finger and I can lick it. All right. Where's my other one? Going in. Mandy, is the grain salad a gluten-free recipe? No, it's not. I'm very dis I'm disappointed about that. No, so it does use Freaker. And I've got a little interesting fact for you about Freaker in a minute when I've got this going. Okay, and um, if you've so got any suggestion for substitute then? Yeah, um, I, you could probably use quinoa. I'd love to do any problem with getting things into a container before you start. Maybe there's a little bit along the way. All right, lid on. 20 seconds, speed six. So it's just sort of mixed everything up, but I'm going to scrape down the sides and it's going to give it another little mix. So this is our dressing for our salad. And the little story about Frika, so I was looking it up yesterday, and it says, according to food law, Frika's fiery story dates back thousands of years, possibly as far back as 2300 BC. So allegedly a Middle Eastern village came under enemy attack and their crops of young green wheat caught fire during the siege. The villagers ingeniously found they were able to salvage their food simply by rubbing away the burned chaff to reveal the roasted wheat kernels inside. And um, so what we know is Frika, which I'll show you a picture in a minute, well, I'll show it to you <laughs> once I put it in. Um, it actually, the word Frika means to rub or the rubbed one. So there you go, a little bit of history. Um, okay. Going on again. 20 seconds again. Mandy, do you think um, Mark suggested that could but wheat be exchanged? Oh, yeah, possibly, for quite possibly. I think it would be one of those things you just got to give it a bit of a go, but you're right, the buckwheat kernels might be might work as well. Great, thank you, Mark. The, the, yeah. 
really. I'm thinking when we have our, our Greek lambs through Vlaki tonight, the boys can have their pita breads and salad, and I might just have a, uh, you know, a, a normal Greek salad with the lamb. It'd be beautiful. Okay. Clean and dry messing one. Oh, cleaning and dry. I'm just trying to think if I've got, I haven't got a clean one. I'll just give this one a quick little wash out. So the quick way to do this is literally just cover your blades with water. Pop your lid back on again. Now, when you're on the screen here, you can just save the recipe by clicking um, that home button. And now I'm just going to turn this up just there for a couple of seconds. Um, when Pam's doing her thing, I will actually clean my other bowl by um, using the pre-clean mode. But anyway, I've got obviously got some left on the measuring cup. That's looking a lot cleaner though. Quick little uh, clean up here. So I'm using the, um, I don't know if you've seen this, this looks like a toilet brush. This is the eco-friendly bamboo um, Thermomix brush. I'm not sure why I'm really cleaning that because I think I know what's coming next. We'll see. We'll see what comes. Oh, so the next bit here was um, actually uh, toasting some seeds. So I did do that so we didn't have to wait for that to toast it. It's pumpkin seeds, slivered almonds. I only had flaked almonds. So we've got flaked almonds, sunflower seeds. Put them and you toast them for five minutes. Um, I do need to just dry this out quick. Half a bunch of coriander, leaves only. Got those in here. I've got um, parsley in here as well. And two spring onions, which I've just chopped up to there. In that goes. Move it on. Three seconds, speed seven. Okay, just chop that up. And it says to put it into the serving bowl, which I actually do have um, in another spot. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to use the one that's just had the cucumber in it because I'm pretty sure the next bit's steaming. So I can just go to place simmering basket onto mixing bowl lid. Well, I've done this bit because there was a little bit of, um, of draining. So the frica. So the frica, I've got frica and lentils in here. But that is, you can see that, that, that is the frica. It look, looks a bit like rice. 90 grams of French green lentils, rinse under running water. So that's what I've done. Then I'm going to put um, water in. And just a little trick. If you use your boiling water, it's going to cut down your cooking time. So I was trying to use the boiling water. It will cut your cooking down time down by about five minutes. My simmering basket in remembering to put it in this way around with so the TM61 has a hinge, just making sure that's towards the front so it can be easier to come out. And then we're just going to put, um, I'll put a clean lid on. And that's going to steam for 10 minutes. So um, I'm just going to give you one more quick quiz before we head over to Pam. All right. What is the Greek version of a shish kebab? Perfect. Oh, no, you're all so smart. All right, over to Pam, and we'll come back um, a bit later. Fantastic. Thanks. Um, Boone, do you want to put me on the larger screen I've got, if you can? Yep. Give me a minute. Yep, here we go. Fantastic. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, what we're doing today is prawn saganaki. So if you say saganaki to a non-Greek like me, uh, you often think of a little um, pan with um, lovely cheese in it, halloumi, um, something like that. It's beautiful. I love it. Um, so this is quite different. So saganaki traditionally, I believe, 
Irene might tell me different, but uh, I believe it's cooked in a pan. Now, the nice thing is with dairy mix, we can cheat and do all sorts of things. So people like me who don't have a great background can cheat and pretend that we are an expert in every, in every sort of cuisine. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to do um, prawn saganaki with feta. So it's a lovely, easy one too. Now, um, boom, we better go down to the little screen. Okay, if I can find it. this You can this find screen. me. I think I'm under one Pam Thermomix, something like that. Hang on. This is it. How are we going? You got it? Uh, I don't know. I can't tell. Can you tell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I okay. think it. Yep. All right, so we're just going to press start cooking. I've got this up. I've saved it in my week. So no, um, Boom, sorry. You haven't spotlighted. Her, her sorry, her hang on, let me try again. I thought I did. Oh, okay, sorry. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Are we right? Yep, go, Pam. Okie dokie. So, start cooking. One brown onion. Now, because I'm not cooking at your place today, uh, where I would cook with an onion, and I'd be a very poor Greek, I have to tell you, because I can't eat onions or garlic. So, <laughs> I'm using leek today. Uh, and this is the other nice thing about cooking dough. People think, oh, I've got to follow everything in the recipe and I've got to do exactly what they tell me. You don't. So I've got leek instead of onion. Um, now, I'm going to weigh it because I'm not sure exactly what uh, the weight of this is. So I'm just going to press the scales on here or this little button. I'm going to try it with this. Here we go. Scales. So you can interrupt your recipes as you go along. Pop this in. A little bit too much. So I'll take out one of the bigger ones. Oh, a tiny bit too much. Oh, that'll do. <laughs> okay, great. Back to the recipe and next. I'm trying to use this little stylus thing. I'm not sure it's working. There we go. Insert measuring cup. Give, give that a bit of a chop. Round spent seven. <laughs> And we'll give the bowl a bit of a scrape down. Oh, it's a bit different to onions, but uh, still give you a nice flavour. But uh, as I said, onions are fine for normal people. <laughs> um, oops. Add in 50 grams of olive oil. So you know it's you know it's a great recipe when there's lots of olive oil. <laughs> Very true, Pam. <laughs> and it's good for you. <laughs> there we go, 50. So what we're going to do now, if they, even though it does say insert measuring cup in the mixing bowl lid, I'm going to take mine off because you want it to... Um, you basically want to let some of the steam evaporate when you're cooking, uh, when you're sautéing your onions just so it uh, gives you an opportunity to get the heat up high and get it caramelising a bit without, um, without uh, too much liquid in there. Uh, of course, this recipe doesn't have high heat, um, which some do, some don't. But on the TM6s, we've of course got high heat cooking, which is great for onions. I can do leek on there, but I just got to leave them in big pieces. So that's very important to when you're cooking uh, at high heat and you get the caramelisation you uh, leave them in large pieces. You don't chop them down first. So I've got some steam coming off there already. Um, and we've got, oh, I can hear it sizzling. Beautiful. Pam, let me know if you need a, if you need a quiz question at any point in time. Thank your pardon? Let me know if you need a quiz question at any point in oh, time. Oh, well, I've got a minute to go, so why don't you fire All away? Right. Okay, here we go. Next one. Um, what makes up the Mediterranean triad, Greek or triad, Greek cuisine is based on? So which three ingredients? That's a tricky one, I reckon. Oh, response is not as quick. We need three ingredients, do we? I reckon, three ingredients. I reckon it's olive oil. Olive oil and olive oil. might be right. Olive oil and olive oil and olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> For surely garlic. <laughs> now, olive oil is correct. Oh, who's put, actually, I want to see what answers come up and then I will tell everyone. I want to hear your response too, Mandy, and then I'll tell you what my okay. mind is. So I'd love to. Let's see. Here we go. In, in the meantime, Mandy, 
Um, yeah. The base you have for your Thermomix, where did you get it from? Lisa wants to know. Oh, um, that's, I've, I've got some of those in stock. You mean, you mean the tile that it's sitting on? Yes. Yes, I have those. Okay. So contact me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Contact Mandy. Okay, so my onions are going here. Uh, I'm just going to pop in the next lot of ingredients. And while that's cooking, we can go back and, and, and Irene can tell us what the real answer is. Yeah, okay, yeah. so um, I've just got canned diced tomatoes. I'm, um, I like looking after our farmers, so I don't use home brand. <laughs> so I like to give the farmers as much, uh, as much money as I can. And even though that's a whole can... It looks like it's weighing under, which is we won't talk about that too much, but never mind. <laughs> okay, a uh, teaspoon of sugar, just a little bit. I always have raw sugar in my house, but that's because I that's what I use for thermomix, everything. Okay, 200 mils of water. Now, I might use a little bit less because I've got a little bit less tomato. So I've weighed that out. I might use, that's roughly what the um, tomatoes were. And somewhere, oh, there's my salt. A little bit of salt. And a little less pepper. Two teaspoons of dried oregano, which I've got here. And five fresh mint leaves straight from the garden. Some of them are looking a bit sad, but there were some that were still respectable. And then we are going to put the lid on and give that 15 minutes. Okay, so Mandy and Irene, back to you. Well, I want to hear what Mandy says, Google says. what Sammy Russell said. Oh, sorry, Sammy, hang on. Okay. Olive oil, wheat and wine. So she's pretty right, um, yep. except my mum doesn't drink. So <laughs> we'll take that one off her list. Um, every, pretty much every dish, I won't say every dish we cook, you know, there's some olive oil in it. Um, and honestly, seasonings are very limited. So salt, pepper. Um, I might, um, might sneak around with my camera later so you guys can have a look at my mother's garden. But... My mum grows everything. This is homegrown oregano. And to be honest, guys, it is nothing like the stuff you get in the bottles uh, from, you know, Safeway, Woolies, you know, from the supermarket. It's really, 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 really pungent. Um, and I know not everyone lives, you know, where they can grow some, grow some veggies, but um, by all means, if you're ever, ever down south there, I come and have a smell of this stuff. Every, um, there's lots of beautiful delis um, in Oakley. You know, Paran Market has some Greek delis. South Melbourne Market has some Greek delis. So you're going to find someone who carries a lot of our traditional um, herbs and herbs and spices. But certainly salt, pepper, olive oil, tomato, um, bread, so wheat. Um, it's pretty much the staple of most things that we cook. So um, very, very um, basic flavours. I've got mum onto the chilli now, which is great because it adds a little bit of depth. Um, and, you know, she's gradually, gradually getting better with the heat point. Not a lot of Greeks like chilli, um, but I love it. So, you know, give it a go. Um, I want to show you... Oh, Miss Mandy, you're ready to move on to something else? I'm happy to show people... Oh, Pam, are you ready yet? Okay. No, no, I've got ages, okay. Green. I've got another 13 minutes. All right. Um, I'm going to show this up. So this is olive oil from Greece. The colour is really deep green. I'm going to compare it to... You can see your light vegetable oils, how light and yellow they are. Um, my uncle sends us, very fortunate, um, he sends us olive oil from Greece every year in the tins. Um, when you do get tinned oil, best to get it back into a bottle, but into a dark place. So we basically have, you know, probably have 40 of these style bottles and we um, decant it out of the tins and straight back into the bottles and store them in a dark place. And the quicker you go through it, the better. So um, we share this around. So I've got um, three older brothers. So all the um, family gets some, which is, which is great. So back to you, Pam. And we'll try well, to see questions. Here, I I still got Mandy, Mandy, so Mandy, I think you can uh, do a few more quizzes. 
Mandy, before I, um, sorry, Mandy, 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 sorry, sorry, Mandy, sorry, Mandy, right. before you go on, the other question is, would you substitute quinoa for the wheat in your salad? Yeah, and I, I think Kelly put an answer up about that too, that that's what it suggests, I think. Oh, that's okay. And, and you think that will work well? Yeah, I think so, but you might want to cook it for as long as this. So I've just literally stirred the frika. And oh, it said add another 250 grams of water because we're cooking for a bit longer. Um, that's interesting because I wouldn't have I wouldn't have thought to add more water um, at this stage. I'm not going to add more water. Okay, it says so, but we're on our, on our 500 grams of water. We should be able to cook for half an hour, steam for half an hour. So um, I'm going to be naughty, all right, and I'm going to just keep going. Um, so I've just literally stirred everything, and now I'm, it's good. that's going to stay for another 12 minutes. But in that time, uh, I'm going to do the pita bread. Uh, and before I do that, I've got a really good question. All right, quiz question. Um, and that is, why a beef dish is not common in Greece? No cattle. <laughs> no cattle. <laughs> why, why would you have? Okay, not, none, of, none, of them are, none of them are right yet. Okay, there may not be many cows. So, so why don't they have cows in Greece? Can I have a guess? <laughs> You're not allowed. <laughs> yeah, someone, Teresa Fino has got it right. She's absolutely spot on. Um, they're, they're most, it's mostly rock, guys. There's no grass fields like there are in Australia. So you're climbing up mountains, down the mountains. Oh, that's why there's so many goats. <laughs> absolutely. So that's it. Yeah, so goats, goats and, uh, yeah, exactly two, Billy. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm going to get on with this um, bit of bread now. So I'll come onto this screen. I'm just going to add very quickly, so someone was asking about the bottles. Um, guys, the bottles, I just buy whatever I can find. You go to the $2 shops, you're going to find different bottles of different sizes, so just um, explore. You can go online. There's lots of um, bottling places that do things for beer. You can use some of those dark bottles as well, so they're pretty awesome. Okay, so um, before I start, thank you, Terry, very much. Pam and I quickly <laughs> rendezvoused yesterday. And, um, oh, I've got this on the one. And I'm very grateful, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so start cooking. Now, what I did was I made half a quantity before, so I'm just making half a quantity because we've got pita breads coming out of our ears in our house with all the practicing. So I'm just doing half a teaspoon of the yeast. And I forgot to get myself some water. And then, so this is an American recipe. It's in ounces. Your thermomix automatically goes to ounces. But what you need to do, if you're looking for it on Cookie Do, is you need to scroll right to the very bottom. I'm going to filters. You need to scroll to the very bottom and, um, and add in other countries. And if you click on um, see other countries, uh, the very bottom one will be the United States. So I'm doing five ounces of water. One teaspoon of sugar. This is half a teaspoon because I'm having it. So that's just going to mix up for 30 seconds. Irene. Irene, where would you say you would get good olive oil in Melbourne? <laughs> so, um, believe it or not, I actually prefer some of the Italian oils. Um, they use less sprays. Um, my uncle grows organic olive oil, so you, it's very hard to find that here in Australia. 
Um, a lot of the oils that come in are blended, so there will be pure olive oil mixed in with the vegetable oil. Um, Cobram Estate is stunning. Um, so we've got some gorgeous Australian oils. Um, I tend to try and that Cobram's delicious. But the flavour is completely different. So Mandy, well, next, you know, hopefully we'll be out of um, lockdown soon, but um, we can try and... Um, and we'll do that flavour difference. It's very, very different. He grows all, you know, organic stuff, which is just stunning and it's pure. He's, um, he gets it graded um, in order to get top price for it. It's got less than 1% acidity balance to it. So it's just incredible. Um, but yeah, the Cobram's, the Cobram's great um, and available at your local supermarket, which is fantastic. Um, the Italian oils are delicious. There is a Greek oil that I do get when we're between barrels from my uncle. I'm going to see if I've got any left. I'll, I'll be back in a minute. Thank you. All right, I'm just carrying on here. Let's keep moving. Um, all right. Oops. <laughs> just flowered my Thermomix and everything, including me, I think. Um, <laughs> all right. A little bit cloudy there. One teaspoon of salt. So, again, half quantities. I've just put a big pinch in there. On. Three minutes of kneading. Whilst it's doing that, I'm going to ask you some more questions. Okay. All right. What is the name of the Greek dessert made with phyllo, chopped nuts, and lots of honey? <laughs> yes. Perfect. Well done. Baklava. <laughs> All right, next one. What is feta cheese made of? Yeah, sheep's milk. Good on you, Lisa. All of you. Excellent. Um, what ingredients traditionally make up a Greek salad? tomatoes, cucumber, feta, olive oil, yeah, and green pepper, I'm told. I don't know, what, what are your thoughts, Irene? Oh, she's gone. Irene, yeah, milk. Sorry, take two. We also add these. So, so what do you add? These. <laughs> what are these? Change the hey, camera for a second. Yep, hang on. All right. So we make rusks. Oh. So twice cooked, traditionally made with barley flour. So it's basically bread using barley flour. You bake it, then you let it cool down, then you slice it and you rebake it again. So um, this is very traditional Cretan and you basically they're, they're supersized croutons that haven't been fried and they go in to soak up all that beautiful olive oil, tomato salsa. And while you're on my screen, hopefully you can all see that. It's not very... No, not really. No, it's not very good. Yeah, it's slightly, slightly okay, it's called Colum, Columpari, Columpari Greek olive oil. It's a Cretan, Cretan one. I'm not sure. All right, hold, hold it tight, hold it tight. Yep. Yep, there. Great. So you can find this at pretty much every Greek deli. It's a really dark green tin, pretty expensive, but it's probably as close as to my uncle's olive oil as you're going to get. And we've okay. obviously we've run out. We've run out home. We use that in between, um, in between. Um, so, go back to Mandy. okay. Next question. You ready? Fingers at the ready. Um, so you probably have to have a look and see. I just look up in Oasis and see if they stop it. Um, what is the main filling of Spano Capita Copita, whatever it is? <laughs> Spano Copita. <laughs> Yes, yeah, you're all too smart. You're all too smart. Okay. Um, okay, I've got one last one, but I've got a bonus one. All right. So the bonus, uh, the first, the last one is what is Saganaki? And um, Queen, if you can come back to my the camera, please. All right. 
I gave you a hint before. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Where are you now? Yeah, yeah. Fried, fried cheese, would that be fair enough? Or is it a specific fried cheese, RA? Well, I thought it was actually a dishes cooked in a pan. Yeah, I think so too. What do you think, it, Irene? It, it, it is, but it's actually, we don't, uh, some places use halloumi. We, I don't use halloumi. Um, we use kefalopiri. Uh, I can probably pronounce a thousand Greek words, um, but we don't, I don't use halloumi. We use different cheeses. Most of the stuff that you'll get served at a Greek restaurant will be kefalopiri, not halloumi. And you can buy it pre-sliced, nice and thin, ready to pop on the pan. Honestly, it's just cheaper to buy it whole and slice it yourself, like most things. All right. Okay, um, I'll save the bonus question. It's a really tricky one. I'm going to have to... Um, I think, think the hardest one so far was the Mediterranean triad of Greek cuisine, which is Sammy Russell. So she's the winning, winning person so far. Um, but I've got my, my little one, my last one is a really tricky one. Um, okay, that's my dough. All right, and then what you need to do is actually let it rest for an hour or so, which obviously we're not going to do here. But what I did do, and what I found when I was making this the other day, was um, I made it, I made some, I was really busy. We were, we were running a cooking spritz that night. I was making, uh, she, but no, back to the, back to the uh, other screen. Sorry, please. okay. All right. Um, we were having a cook, doing cooking spritz. I was getting dinner on the table. It was just crazy. So I quickly threw some um, of the pitters into the oven and they were okay. But um, the next, but I left the rest of it Irene said to me, and this is a really, really good tip. So Irene's our bread, well, and Boone's also very good at bread. So when you're resting dough, so I've let this, I made this last night, okay? And when you're resting dough, uh, so my fridge on, um, on Wednesday morning, I had um, naan bread dough and I had pita bread dough. There was dough everywhere. So I had to do a big cook up. Anyway, um, it was much better having just rested overnight. And in the recipe, it actually tells us to rest it in between rolling out and cooking and everything. But I found that I didn't need to do that because it had been doing all this overnight. So I've got to trust that it will do the same and still wow you. All right. So I'm just going to go back to my screen. It says probably covered with cling wrap, blah, blah, blah. Okay. There's seven to eight pieces. Lost my... Oh, nice chopper. I'll just have to use this a bit. So again, I'm on the um, I'm on the thermomat, so um, I don't want to actually use anything sharp. So I'm going to say this is going to be four. Got a very nice little um green thermix cutter thing, but I can't see it. So um, all right. And then you make it into a ball. All mixed into a ball, it says. And it says allow to rest for 15 minutes. That's the bit I'm not doing. Okay. And then I have to roll each ball out um, into a flat circle, approximately six inches. Remembering we are in um, America currently doing this. Um, and so I'm just going to do... One. So, and Mandy, else. this sorry, Mandy, this uh, recipe is from the American cookie dough, is it right? The American cookie dough, yeah, absolutely. And it's just a nun. No, 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 no. This is just pita bread. It's just oh, pita just bread. pita bread. Sorry, yeah. Yep. In yep. America, so it is. Yeah, getting confusing. Talking about nun that we did the other night. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, yeah, it's just there. Um. So you just need to make sure that you add those filters in and make sure you have um. um US in there. Now, any of you who are not using cookie dough, honestly, I know a lot of TM31 owners say, no, 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 you know, I, it's no good for me. It absolutely is. All right. Now, I'm happy if there's enough people who say yes, I'm happy to run a session on cookie dough on Monday evening at eight o'clock. So I just need a response from you guys and I'll need some, oh, I can check that afterwards. But if, if you want a session on how to navigate cookie dough, how to add those filters in, it's not a very round pit of bread. I know Irene would do a far better job. But, um, and she has, she has tried to teach me two circles. <laughs> but anyway, 
So I'll just, so I have to go up and down like that, and then I have to go across, <laughs> and I have to go that way, and then I have to go that way. Very good. <laughs> and I go that way, um, that way. We have a little lesson, so we do our cooking experiences on a on a Tuesday. Oops, Tuesday night, and then then Irene teaches me how to do things. Um, to do with bread, because I'm I'm not a bread maker. I don't. You probably can't see this, but there are lots and lots of little air bubbles in here, um, which is fabulous. Uh, and one of the keys to actually cooking this is that your pan needs to be, um, sorry, so they're going to cook in the oven and what it says is your tray must be hot. So you're putting them onto a hot tray. And now Mandy, own, yeah. Mandy, I might interrupt quickly and I'm just going to show everyone how I put the prawns into this dish. Go for it. Yeah, Why you are you doing that? You go for Fantastic. It. Thanks. Thanks, Boone. So we've finished cooking that uh, lovely sauce and I'll just show you quickly. So that's our fabulous, um, lovely tomato-based sauce. And you see how much liquid's in there. So it doesn't have to just be um, straight uh, uh, water where you simmer because I'm putting the simmering basket in now, sitting that in there. Whoops. Oh, low battery. That's not good. Uh, and popping the simmering basket in and then there's 24... The recipe says 24 uh, raw prawns with um, tails, and I'm just going to simmer them in the simmering basket. So basically, they're steaming in there. So I'll pop that on. Oops, there we go. Tails intact. Putting on that lid again, and that's just going to take five minutes. It could take a little bit more. We'll see how what they look like when we finish the five minutes. So. Uh, uh, You've got the lovely multi-level cooking, which I always feel very smug about when, when I do that. Okay, back to you, Mandy. Thank you. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cook these two at the moment. But I'm, as I said, my tray, it's, it's in a really hot oven too. So it says uh, 475 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So I looked it up. It's about, well, it's probably as hot as your oven will go. So mine's on at um, 220 something. All right, so I'm just going to pull the tray out and put them on. I'm just going straight on. I haven't greased it. I haven't done anything. They're just going to sit straight on. I'll show you in a sec. Okay, so just sitting straight on the tray. All right, and then, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bake for four to five, four to five minutes until puffed up. So I'm not going to do the other ones at the moment because we've got plenty. Just got to finish off these other things. Um, but I will show you. I, I have got some ones that I made the other day. It's going to be little dough piles everywhere. Um, so I'm just going to finish off this other salad. So basically you have to remove the simmering basket with the aid of the spatula. So you will remember that you have a hook on your um, spatula. That's why I wanted this at the big at the um, so I wanted this at the front so I can actually get my um, get this out. And then I'm gonna rinse under runny cold running water and set aside to drain. And just for your information. There is plenty of water left inside there. So you know how I didn't add water where it said to add water? It seems to be fine. I expect my grains are cooked though. Hang on. I'm gonna pop them under some cold water and just let them drain. Okay. Right. So transfer into the serving bowl. So I'll do that in a minute. Place the bowl onto the mixing bowl lid and you weigh into the bowl. Um, I'm just going to use this container, okay, I had to tear that because I've put the bowl on top, 70 grams of raisins, now I did weigh these this morning, they were a bit ordinary, my husband refused to eat them, so I have just rehydrated them a bit, 
Um, so they may weigh a bit more now they've got water in them. Anyway, there we go. 15 grams of water added. 30 grams of lemon juice. Okay, just in there, that's going in. Three tablespoons of olive oil. So I'm just going to do a little bit of a guesstimate on that. Three. Oh, and I had to add my um, seeds. I didn't show you my seeds and nuts, so I'm not all going to fit in there, I think. You probably put them on here. But those are all my seeds and nuts that were toasted. We didn't actually do them today because that was a waste of your time. So I'm just going to actually mix all this in here. That'll be the stir around. Yum, it smells so good. Um, and then it says, okay, so I'm going to mix, put all the salad stuff together. We're going to come back and show you what everything looks like. Now, just a little thing with the um, pomegranate arrows. So I, the only way I could find pomegranate was like this. I don't like buying the plastic part, you know, at least I can reuse this and store something in it rather than, you know, glad wrapping stuff. Um, but a little tip. If you can only, if you can get a whole pomegranate, you can actually get the arrows out using your Thermomix. And what you do is um, you can cut it into quarters or something like that, put it into the bowl, four seconds speed, four reverse, and, um, and that pushes the arrows out. So you have them in the bottom, or you have everything in there, okay? The outside casing of the pomegranate, everything. Put some water in. The, the outside casing and the um, pith, if you like, will all float and you can scoop that off and then you could just drain it through your um, simmering basket and then you can get your arrows out. So there you go, quick little tip. Um, let me just see what else I've got to say. Oh yeah, the pita breads. Oh, of which I better just check them. Um, oh, I'm I'm the pans, there. Pans, so much ready. Back to pan. Okay. Uh, I've had five minutes cooking these prawns. I'm just going to have a look now to see what sort of state they're in. And put that underneath there. And, oh, they look fabulous. Sorry, it's off, off camera. There's a lot of sauce in there. And I'm just going to try and hold it up without getting my hands burnt. But they are well and truly cooked. So I'm just going to pop those into a little... Here my server, a small one, and go back to my recipe, add in 200 grams of feta cheese, just in chunks like that. That's a little bit under 200, but that's okay. That's only going to need a couple of minutes. Put that through. Actually, 30 seconds. And then we're pretty much done, which... Gives you a rough idea how simple this um, saganaki is. So that last prawn, step, that last step, you can, you can actually do in the thermo server. That last 30 seconds? Yes, you probably could. Yeah, just stir just it through, it in. pop the lid on, yeah, and let it sit for a couple of minutes. Hey, so actually, Boone, if you could put me back onto the big screen, that would be great. So yep. what I'm going to do now is one of the things that we often like to show you in our um, cooking um, uh, classes that we do is some of the host rewards you can get. So I'm going to use this beautiful oval um, demo server, which is, I use it a lot for just serving at the table too. It's a, it's a really nice dish. So here's the... Uh, Here's the actual base of it, which is beautiful. Um, and then, so I just pop that in. It does say divide between four bowls, but I'm just going to pop it in here for the purposes of today. And pop the prawns on top. And garnish with a little bit of extra feta. 
and some parsley, which has come out of a lovely friend of mine's garden. So that is our prawn saganaki. Hopefully you can see that. Can you see it? Can you guys, can you see that? Yep. Amazing, Pam. Well, it was pretty simple. So as I said, for a non-Greek like me, I said I'd make a lousy Greek. No garlic, no onion, and my husband doesn't need lamb. So we'd be useless. But I mean, I'm so useless, I can still do this though. <laughs> That's why I love Thermomix. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, if you want to come back to me, I'll show you the pita bread. showing the boys, like, look at my pit of bread. So good. Um, so that's pretty amazing. Um, and that's the salad there. Um, now, I'm, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll give you, Irene, how are you going? You ready for us? Irene, are you ready? Lost, Irene. Yeah, are you ready for us? No, I'm here, so the mute, I was on mute. Uh, yeah, sure, come through. Oh, so, yep. No, no, that's good. Okay. I'm just taking the large one out of the oven. I've already taken the little ones out. So you all have a look. She's nice and puffy and golden. Looks yum. Looks very professional, doesn't it? Thank you, darling. <laughs> so she's puffed up. She's puffed up really nicely. That's why you don't want to tighten your pastry too much. So kind of leave it a little bit loose as you're doing the folds. And again, if you don't want the pastry up the sides, the simplest way to do it is to cut your pastry exactly the size of your tin, lay your bottom, put your cream in, lay the top sheets, and you get a nice even, and, and you probably get a little bit more height because obviously the pastry holds it down a little bit. So this needs 10 minutes before you put any syrup on it. So we're just going to move it over here. We're going to give it 10 minutes it needs. I pulled these ones out earlier. So I'm going to... And I put some syrup on. Now, really, really important. Anyone that was watching my screen, so I made an ice bath. You need this needs to be cold. Um, even fridge cold would be fine. You want a cold syrup on a hot galaka burrito. If you do a hot syrup on a hot galaka burrito, you're going to get really soggy pastry, which I'm sure you don't want. Just bear with me. I'm just going to get a little serving plate. So I let the others sit out of the oven for about 10 minutes. Now, ideally, you want them to sit in the syrup for about an hour. Some people say five hours. But if you can't wait, which I can't wait, I'm just going to get a spoon and I'm going to pop one out. And you want to do that so that it drinks up the syrup really, really well. And obviously, this is going to be, this, this is probably not going to work. Just too hot. Too hot, yeah? Yeah. But we'll try anyway. So we'll let them do their thing. And you guys can see that in the screenshot. Um, and I've just got some of the little orange strands, which were in my syrup, and I've just sliced them. They're really lovely and sweet. And she's good to go. Yum, yum, I'm yum. not going to slice it just yet. It's very wobbly. <laughs> I might keep it a, a few minutes um, and we'll see what it looks like on the inside. But this needs to sit for about 10. You'll see it automatically starts to sit down. The pastry starts to flatten a little bit, which is fine. And then we're going to pour the syrup over the top. Um, I get a question of how much syrup. The answer is as much as you want. <laughs> so, um, at least probably two. Like I just use, I've got a little soup. Kind of serving spoon. I would probably go over that maybe three times. I probably wouldn't use all of that syrup, but a fair bit. Okay, who's next? Uh, come back to me and I'll just show you these and just finish off a little bit and then we'll quickly. I don't think we've got 10 minutes to wait, Irene, that's all. Um, oh, no, no, I don't think, no, no, that's why I wanted to. So um, I'm basically just pouring, it's just, it's too hot at the moment. So I'm just going to give it to Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine, sure. yeah. That's why I did these okay. ones earlier and they will. They will puff up, so they'll start to drink that liquid and puff up. Yeah, cool. Okay, so that's a little soup. That's my little pita bread. Um, that's the one that puffed up really beautifully. See the big pocket in there? 
And I've just put some of the lamb and a bit of the tzatziki in there. Now, with the lamb, I didn't do all of it. I don't know, do you know how to shred chicken in your Thermomix? You just make sure you've got it in pieces. Four seconds speed, four reverse. Love that one. That's what does our pomegranates and that's what does our shredding. So it doesn't shred it quite as well as the chicken because it, it's a, it's a um, I don't know, fibrous is the right word, but it's a, it's a stronger meat than the chicken. But that has still shredded some of my lamb. I haven't put all, I only put a little bit in. So. Um, Sorry, Mandy, was it four seconds for? Speed four reverse, yes. Reverse, thank you. Yes. Uh, okay, right. Um, a couple of things. So <clears throat> I'd really like to help the girls who've been cooking and Boone particularly on the, um, who've been on the chat for helping today. You know, they do give up their afternoon to help and support you guys. Uh, and actually, Boone, you can come back to the camera if you like. I'm just talking to myself here. <laughs> Sorry. <Okay. laughs> it's all right. Um, and um, also, I know we have a couple of our new team members on. We've got Keisha and Alicia who are hopping on and possibly Marla might be on as well. Can't see everybody. Uh, and so thank them too for coming along and hopefully you'll be seeing them in the future. When we do Spanish, we're going to have Alicia. When we do Polish, we're going to have Keisha and Marla. Amazing. Um, but just if, if anyone has... Um, well, actually, I've got, don't go yet because I've got that bonus for that question, okay? Um, but remember I did mention before... Um, that we do, there is an opportunity to earn um, a, the full price of a TM6 or get a discounted TM6. If that's of interest to you, feel free to stay on at the end and I can um, talk to you a little bit more about that. But the all important question, uh, okay. You may, none of you may know this. Anyway, what is the name of the blue zone in Greece? Does anybody know what a blue zone is? Oh, Anna Shearman, perfect. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? You better explain. <laughs> I will, I will, but I'm really impressed. That's wonderful. You deserve a prize too for that. Um, okay, so a uh, blue zone is where the longest people in the world live. So there are various blue zones. There's um, one in Greece. There's one actually just out of Los Angeles, which people are a little bit confused about. Um, Okinawa in Japan. Um, and um, yeah, so there's various places around the world and people just live a much longer life in those areas. And it, it's to do with their food. Well, this is, what, this is what they're saying. There's been a lot of research on the blue zone. So it's to do with what they eat. It's to do with how they live their lives. So things like, um, you know, they, they might not go out and exercise every day, but um, like in traditional way, like we'll go, you know, going for a walk or whatever, but they... Their life is all about, I mean, they're growing their own food, they're, they're doing all those sorts of things. So they are very, yeah, exactly. Community and lifestyle is really important. So the, the, the place in um, LA, um, they, had, uh, uh, they had a very big um, church community. And that's one of the things that they think has, has made a difference for them. But anyway, just a little bit of a side for you. Um, and well done, Anna. Uh, very impressed. And um, we hope you've all enjoyed it and it, as I said, if anybody's interested in finding out more about joining our team or if you're consulted from another team, absolutely fine, you go to them, but you can still stay on and just find out a bit more. Um, sorry we've gone longer than we did, uh, as we did last time. We've got to learn to cut down our recipes or talk less or something, but you're uh, very welcome to have you here and oh, we are going to run um, an immune boosting power hour. We will keep it to an hour next Saturday. 11.30, but um, so just let us know if that's of interest to you. Uh, okay, all right, so thanks a lot. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Get out and get some sunshine. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know Jackie's story, you're more than five kilometers from me. <laughs> We, we could have, it'd be lovely if we could just um, go, go and share all our food. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Okay, I think that's all. Everyone's gone off.
Oh no, we've still got more. Yeah, we've still got a few. Yeah, and um, Boone, you might need to send make me host again so I can stop the recording, please. Yes, I will if I remember how to do it. Let's go on more next to my name. Yeah, no, I'm trying to. Hang on. Sorry, I had to unmute and do a few things with my other one. My okay. phone was about to die. I had eight percent left, and I've got to flip my screen now. Hang on. Hmm. Here we go. Hang on. Right. Um, we there yet? Oh yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. Me. Yep. Perfect. All right. I'll stop recording. Oh, where's my recording gone? Don't know. It still says recording.